Hey, welcome back to my studio. I found a canvas. Let's go make some art. All right, look at that beautiful balloon sky. All right, figuring out how many balloons I needed to make was just going into Inkscape and drawing it out. So about 20 of them. To make those balloons, I decided to make a paper press, which meant using some Fimo and then baking that off as the center part balloon. And then once that was done, I surrounded it with some more Fimo just to make the outer press area and then baked that off as well. Now, a little bit of sculpting was involved here to get the shape just right, but there you go. I made the original balloons out of paper, just cutting about the approximate size I needed, dipping it a few times in water to just get it damp, and then pressing it between the two halves of the mold. If you're going to do something like this, just know that the clay actually started cracking just from the pressure of pressing on it. Anyway, I let those dry and then went on to making some deeper balloons using hot glue because it's plastic, so it was easy to mold. I started off with a sheet of tissue paper, just the regular stuff for gift wrapping, filled that with some hot glue, and then put another sheet of tissue paper on top and pressed away. Now, I was surprised as anyone to find out that hot glue will give you a third degree burn, so watch yourself if you're going to do something like this. Not only did the mold get hot and stay hot for a while, but it oozed out and burned my the tip of my finger, which I then touched to the palm of my hand, giving me two really nice blisters for the next few days. At this point I just trimmed off the excess and I was left with some beautiful paper and plastic balloons. The only trick really is just to find that edge and that was a little bit more difficult with the paper but easy enough. Lucky for me I am a pack rat so I did find some blue spray paint in the garage and some white spray paint. Now, these were already white, but this made it glossier and brighter, so I went with that. Now, while those were drying, I went and painted the canvas. So just a blue sky and some grass. Now, my technique for painting is just to fold the colors into themselves rather than trying to mix them. So you get nice streaks, you get some energy and action. I also like to paint the outside edges of the canvas. I'm not really a frame person. I think that frames are not only expensive, but they detract from the piece. So I paint the outside edges and then I add in some thicker areas. The thing I like about this paint is that you can go really thin and kind of wispy colors or you can just glop it on and get some nice deep texture. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm going with thinner spots and then some nice texture. And it would probably help to mention that I do use acrylic paint. I've never used oil paints. I really like the way acrylic dries nice and fast and I get to move on with my life. I'm too impatient for oil. I did lose some of the footage of me laying these out, but once I figured out where I wanted the balloons, I glued the paper ones on with this contact cement, and then I hot glued the hot glue balloons on with hot glue. And then let's see how many more times I can say hot glue. I also liked the hot glue because it, it heated up the balloons enough that I could actually bend them around the side of the canvas and just keep the image wrapping around. This one thing I really like about not having a frame. My next step was just to paint in the background trees, so a little bit of gray line coming from the background balloons, and then swirly kind of wispy trees and a kind of a darker gray just to kind of blend into the back. As things are farther away from you, they tend to appear darker, so just keep that in mind as you're painting. Now, for me, it's hard to plan from back to front when I do these paintings, so I actually plan them foreground to the background and then kind of put them in layers, and then I work layer by layer towards the front. All right, a big lesson here for me was 
I had to cut the knot area of the balloon off of the background of the canvas because I couldn't get these strings on otherwise. And then just uh, tying the strings on physically and then letting them hang down all the way just so I had enough slack. And again, working in layers, I'm just adding to the second row of balloons at this point. You'll see why in a bit. And then here I'm just adding some glue all just to make sure the knots stay in place and don't come undone. And then finally gluing the bottom of these kind of second layer strings to the canvas using the same contact cement. Now when I was making the trees I tried a few methods the one I liked best was taking the string and dipping it into the Mod Podge and then kind of pulling it out and scraping off the excess Mod Podge. And then that way I could make the trees any way I wanted. And you'll see here I'm using some wax paper as an overlay and then putting the trees on so that I know the correct size and location as I go. The other thing too is I can just lift this whole thing of trees off and then let them dry off to the side later. Hey, while you're watching me make the rest of these trees, now's a great time to remember all the cool people are subscribing to my channel. So why don't you go ahead and click subscribe, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. You'll really help me grow my channel and share my art with more people. All right, now it's time to make the larger trees, and as you see, I already had made one. They do turn a little bit yellow as they dry, but again, just putting them in place and letting them dry later off to the side. Painting the trees, I used kind of a folded mixture of light green and dark green. Darker green ones for the background trees and then lighter green ones for the foreground trees. And then a mixture, kind of a folded mixture of brown with a touch of black in it for the trunks. And I just used that same color for all the trunks. The thing about this twine though, and I talk about it at the end of the video, is that it destroys your brush. So don't use a really super nice brush for it. Now, originally I was gonna use the string coming off the top of the trees, but I messed those up when I was painting. So I ended up having to tie it down from the balloon and then hang it down, measuring where it would kind of end behind the tree so it looks like it's still coming off the top of the tree later. This whole process took a surprisingly large amount of time. But in the end, I used this contact cement to just glue the trees down again. Oh, one pro tip here is when you are painting the trees or painting any kind of twine, paint the front and back. Otherwise, you're just gonna see the twine from behind the front of the tree. It's not a good look. All right, so I'll speed it up here so you don't have to sit through my hour long torment of gluing these things down, measuring strings. All right, now at this point, I thought I was done enough to show my family, so I did. And I got back, nope, don't really care for it. Eh, it's not so good. Basically, Yes, past Brett, yes. So it's time to go back to the drawing board a little bit. And I decided to remove the front few trees and then put a carousel in there just to kind of break up the image a little bit, give it something more interesting than just a pile of trees and, uh, and then kind of calm down the visual a little bit. Doing this though, I did damage the canvas a little bit, but I just fixed that with paint later, you'll see that. To get the carousel to the right size, I put a piece of paper down and then drew right on it. Those four dashes above, as you can see, are where the balloon lines will come down eventually.
And then I just put that on the table, put some wax paper over it, tape that down. That's a really important step there. And then I'm using a pair of scissors to help me kind of press the string in place because the Mod Podge will stick to your fingers. It's really annoying, but you can use some painter's tape to hold it in place. And then, like I said before, just kind of touching up the paint. Okay. Now the fun part, I'm just painting in the carousel. This red is actually a bit redder than it shows on the video. I don't know why it's showing kind of orange. Either way, either way, I just kind of glopped it on because otherwise it just kind of comes out really thin. So I'm almost kind of filling in the whole twine area with paint, so it's really thick. Now the awning area is going to be nice bright orange. Again, just glopping it in there, just putting it on really super thick. And then eventually I'll come back with some white and put little stripes in there. I also use the same orange in this upper base area just to tie the top and bottom in and make them look like one cohesive unit. The bottom area, the very base of the area, I'm using this light blue, one to tie into the sky, but also to kind of set it off from this dark green background, which ended up being a little bit darker than I wanted, but I'm not going to go back and paint it, so there you go. I also filled in the center area with some white, it's a super, super light gray, it's actually a mirror area. Now for the horses, I went online, I found some images of horses that I kind of liked, then heavily modified them to be what I really wanted, printed them out on archival paper, and then I'm just painting over them. And so you can enjoy watching me paint these at high speed. This is like 300 times speed. But while you're watching me do this, now is another great time to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you do like this video, click that like button. And thank you everybody who has subscribed so far. I feel like I'm starting to get some views and starting to grow. All right, so with these horses, I actually started off with a thinner coat. And then when that was dry, I came back with a really heavy, just again, blobbing it on there, making it nice and thick, giving it some dimension, giving it kind of this 3D look, sculpted look, cutting them out with some magic. and then putting them on with some hot glue. All right, here it is, the finished piece. Now, I'm not sure how much I like it. I actually kind of don't like it. There's just a lot going on with it. Uh, it might actually look better on camera. Now that I'm looking at the monitor, it does look a little bit better on camera. I'll show you some closer video of it and you can decide for yourself. I did learn some stuff though, and here's what I learned. All right, so the first thing I learned is how to make this oven-baked clay two-part mold. It's really good for paper, as you saw. It's good for the uh, hot glue, and it is not so good for thicker foil or anything like that. The other thing I learned is that this string, this twine, which is actually for um, trussing turkeys and things, will destroy your brushes. So if you decide to do this project and you or something similar with this twine, use cheap brushes, something that you don't really care about. I'll talk to you later though, and here's some close-up video of the final piece so you can decide for yourself. Bye.